Everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and welcome back to Primetime Crisis, talking about Supergirl today. The episode in question is Crossfire, and it is the fifth episode of this season. I like this one quite a bit. I thought this was a really tight script overall. I thought that all three of the major subplots that we're dealing with um, fit together thematically in a, a really uh, interesting and intelligent ways, and I was blown away by where we're going with Jimmy Olsen. I feel like I kind of sh should have seen this coming but I wasn't trusting the show to actually do anything with him after it decided that he and Supergirl dating was a bad idea uh, kind of out of nowhere and it seems like that was maybe to facilitate this new direction. I still don't like how that was handled, how we had to wait all season last year uh, just to get to you know what, never mind and what we're doing instead though is really potentially neat and nifty. The only big disappointment I have in this episode is that we don't get to see his suit at the end, but uh that makes me hope that it's worth the wait and that we're building the suspense and tension for that for a good reason. So uh, let me go ahead and just go through each of the subplots and talk about what I thought about stuff. Um, first of all, I guess I'll just talk about the Alex thing real quick. So uh, Alex and Maggie Sawyer look like they're going to be an item, which is uh, not surprising and exactly what we all thought was going to happen. And uh, I, I try to keep away from, by the way, uh, production notes and things, or, or rather, like, uh, this, uh, uh, interviews and things that tell us what's going to happen in the future. Because, you know, I enjoy being surprised by these shows, and this is a thing that I wasn't able to avoid. I knew about this a couple weeks ago um, or more. So, uh, like, like, I think... When she was introduced, I read somewhere she and Alex are going to be an item. That was pretty clear to me from the beginning, and uh, I I thought that was handled surprisingly thoughtfully. Uh, her exploring her sexuality, trying to figure out uh, how she feels about intimacy, uh, the the conversation, or rather the kind of one sided conversation that she has with Maggie at the end, where she's just sorting out her feelings. I thought was really realistic and believable, and uh, suddenly I like Alex more because we're doing this with her and not just uh, because oh yay you know we're being progressive but because I actually uh, buy her uh, her going to that place and uh, the way she's talking about it and uh, it's uh, you know, I've, I've heard uh, people talk about this where they grow up and they think that they just are not interested in intimacy, uh, that that's just not for them, and they find out that it's because they uh, think about those kinds of things differently than other people do, and I really like that in this episode, uh, talking about trying to find your own way. That's kind of the big theme of this episode, that nobody can tell you who you are, you have to discover those things for yourself, and I also really like the conversation that Alex has with Carl in uh, explaining how when she was younger and Kara came to live with them, this was a lesson she had to learn also, that Kara had to find her own way, that she wanted Kara to be just like her, but that couldn't happen. She wasn't her, and she had to learn the hard way, and that's the lesson that she's uh, trying to explain to Kara. But I also like that there is a little bit of subtext in that scene where she's also, of course, talking about herself, uh, talking about how she... Uh, and, and she doesn't get a chance to tell Kara uh, what she's going through, but she's talking about herself a little bit as she's explaining this to Kara, and not in a super selfish way, just in that it, she's trying to help Kara, but just in the sense that uh, she's understanding what Monel is struggling with because she's struggling with not anything like exactly the same thing, but just an identity issue, trying to figure out who she is and what direction she wants to go. So I like that a lot. I also like that it wasn't the typical uh, thing where you get to the end of the scene and she says, you know what, where, where Kara says, there was something you wanted to talk to me about, and she goes, eh, you know, I guess I, I guess because this really, uh, you know, important conversation happened, I'll stretch this out longer and make everybody wait for the moment where I tell you. Um, she's interrupted, and I like that better. I mean, Jackson Rasko likes to complain all the time about how every conversation in these shows tends to get interrupted. I don't think it's as bad in Supergirl as it is in uh, some of the other CW shows, but I like I was okay with it in this instance just because I kind of expected her to kind of get cold feet and not talk about it. And she has an I'm Batman moment where she almost you know, tells her and then they get interrupted and she doesn't have a chance to. 
Uh, the Jimmy Olsen stuff, I'm so excited about. Uh, I think that could be really, really cool. What I like about it is that it's like the next chapter of this character. You know, this is not a Superman prequel show or even a, you know, uh, regular Superman status quo kind of show. It sort of is. And, and of course, we keep introducing villains that you might have thought Superman would have fought already, but he hasn't yet. And so um, this is a something of a reimagining where it, some of those characters have been around and some of them were introducing now, uh, but we're also because, you know, this show is allowed to go in its own way and because it's revolved around, this world is revolved around Superman for a long time, we have characters who have already had their Superman status quo, period, and now they can kind of move on and do something different, and of course that's what we've been doing with Jimmy Olsen since the beginning, so this seems like uh, a, a smart move to me, this seems like uh, the next uh, logical chapter in his life, maybe. I, I like I like the uh, the commonality that he has with Win, where neither of them want to be sidekicks. They both want to be heroes. They've been working with heroes. They wish they could have that too. And just because they have they don't have superpowers doesn't mean they don't have something to contribute. Uh, Win is so likable and I uh, and, and has so much more to contribute this season. They've immediately found the right place for him. Uh, he's grown up a lot. He's uh, in the D now and has his has his place feels like he he's worthwhile now and he's able to now pass on some wisdom to someone else I was really surprised by that reversal you know Jimmy Olsen has had a lot more um, experience than Wynn has and Wynn comes in and gets to play uh, that that a uh, wise sage uh, role for a second which is really cool but I also like that um, Jimmy turns him the wound around the way he does not in that he fully supports what Jimmy is doing, but um, he has that th the same kind of um, understanding about this that Kara comes to, which is the man's got to find his own way. I would, and I like the, the the place where he says, "I would feel bad if I could have helped you, and you went out and got yourself killed, and the reason you got yourself killed was because you didn't have any support." So he can support his friend while still being cautious and uncertain and not liking uh, what his friend is doing. He understands why Jimmy Jimmy feels the need to do this, and he doesn't have to even 100% condone it in order to uh, help his friend out and be supportive of his friend. I really like that. Uh, the conversation where he where he initially tells him that he doesn't want him to do this and that he needs to, or in, and that, you know, he's going to get himself killed and all of that, I thought was, um, was a really strong exchange. Of course, I saw both sides of that. And then at the end, he still feels the same way about it. But again, it's like Kara with mon -El man's got to go his own way and I'm going to do the best I can, uh, you know, to help my friend. Um, they are closer than I ever thought they would be, and that's a friendship that I'm really uh, enjoying and suddenly appreciating in a way I, I never uh, thought I would. I also uh, am, of course, really curious about the suit. Uh, he Because the last time Wynn said he was going to make a suit, it was just the Superman crest in the middle of Superman's chest, and uh, it was in, in order to, uh, take a, um, to, to take a blast to the chest, and it was kind of nothing, and they made a big deal out of it, and there was a reveal at the end, so I'm hoping that the fact that we don't get the reveal of Jimmy's suit at the end of this means that it's going to be really cool and worth the wait. Um, Jimmy uh, says that he has a moniker already figured out. He knows what he wants to call himself as a superhero, and he's going to wait to tell uh, Wynn and everyone else when he has his suit. But Wynn says he already knows what the suit's going to look like and doesn't let Jimmy contribute to that. He says, no, just, just trust me, I have it. So hopefully those two things line <laughs> up. It would be really funny if he made a suit that uh, the motif doesn't go with whatever it is that Jimmy's come up with. Like I said, I was a little disappointed that I didn't get to see it at the end, but uh, hopefully next episode. I mean, I really hope that they don't, you know, stretch this out and make us wait three, four, five episodes before that happens, but surely not because he wants to get on patrol. He wants to get out there and, um, and fight crime, and he's promised uh, when that he won't do that without the suit, and I like the compromise they come to. I think that's re that's really solid. Uh, it also makes the Catco thing make a little bit more sense. I mean, I, I wouldn't figure that he would have the time, really, to go out and fight crime when he's running this, uh, you know, multifaceted organization, uh, uh, this company, Catco, but uh, it's a good... 
it's it's certainly uh, uh you know a good uh, cover for being a superhero and uh, you know you never thought cat grant would be going out fighting crime uh and then finally of course kind of the a story is uh well the a story i guess is cadmus i guess i said three subplots there's kind of four but for the character stuff there's three uh you've got uh, you've got kara uh, dealing with mon allen i've kind of already discussed that just by way of the other characters that she's dealing with um that plays okay i like that mon uh is already not at catco and that he's gonna have to again find his own way figure out something else to do that he's not gonna have the same traditional uh kind of superhero and uh a, 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 you know, superhero alias and um, and secret identity that the other characters, or the, that, you know, Superman and Supergirl have. Uh, so it'll certainly be interesting to see what's done with that. Uh, by the way, with the Jimmy Olsen uh, superhero suit thing, I would not be surprised, because somebody in the comments a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago when I was complaining, or maybe it was even three or four weeks ago, uh, when I was complaining about how Jimmy doesn't seem to really have a role this year and how we put him in the background, and it's it's a little bit like... I should say Martian Manhunter, where uh, at first I didn't like what we were doing with that, and then I found out what it was, and that it was a big reveal, and now I'm really impressed with it. I like how in the background he was. I never would have called this. Uh, but, you know, I like that it, it, if you go back and watch it again now, it plays just kind of mysterious, like, what's Jimmy Olsen doing? Um, so I really like that, and uh, some, some somebody in the comments said, uh, I'm... I, I can't wait to find out what Cap thinks of this when he finally finds out what the deal is, and I, I want to thank that person for not spoiling it for me. Uh, maybe his moniker, and I'm, I'm thinking it's likely to be a superhero thing. I don't uh, like. I'm sorry, a comic book thing, something we already know. Um, I, I, I don't have any real good predictions for that, unless it's Steel. But I kind of don't think we would go there, and I want John Henry Irons in the show, so I, I hope that's not what it is. And the only reason I think Steel is just his build would, would work well for that costume. I'm trying to think of other superheroes he could be that I, uh, you know, that 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 he would that would fit for this that you wouldn't necessarily need or want to see the original person that was in that suit. So I, I don't I don't have any 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 great ideas about that. But um, but I just want folks to know that if you know what it is already because you've been looking at production stuff, this is not me being lazy and not doing research. I don't want to know. I want to find out while I'm watching the show so that I can respond to it in one of these uh, as I'm talking about the show. So anyway, um, with. But with regards uh, to Monel, I, I like like I said, just who knows where that's going to go. I assume at some point he will be a superhero and decide to put a suit on. Um, I liked their dancing again. Uh, this kind of nice compromise that we're coming to, where uh, she doesn't like that the um, people from his planet are all partiers and stuff, uh, but she admits, well, you know, we went to parties too, we danced also, and so they they kind of um, they, they they haven't found a lot of common ground yet, certainly, but she's trying. And I really appreciate that. Uh, the Lena Luthor stuff, I'm uh, definitely interested in and liking. Uh, I, I like that she's still real mysterious, and we can't be sure if she's going to um, succumb to the nature of what the Luthers usually succumb to. I can only imagine that's where this is going. Uh, finding out that her mother is the woman that runs Cadmus uh, is very much a Lionel Luther kind of scenario. And it maybe plays as the obvious thing to do, especially the way it plays at the end. Uh, I didn't love the line delivery of, uh, of what can I do for you, mother? You know, like you know that there's an audience, or mom, or whatever it is. I think she says mom. Uh, like you know there's an audience there waiting to find out why they're, they're connected and if she's working for Cadmus and all of that. I don't think that's what's going on. I, and, and I guess we'll, I imagine we'll find out real quickly if she knows that her mother is the Cadmus lady, uh, but I kind of doubt that she's working for Cadmus or that she uh, even knows exactly what all of that is, but I, I guess we'll, you know, find out soon. But anyway, um, that that could be a really interesting dynamic, certainly. I just wasn't real in love with the way, it, the soap opera way it played. Um, it also made me want to go back and um, get her, uh, Lena Luthor's backstory again, uh, because... I can't remember if she's uh, and help me out in the comments if you remember. Uh, I I don't I, I don't recall if she is supposed to be a um, a blood relative. I mean I mean like 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 a like a blood sister or a half sister to Lex. I think she might have said something about being adopted. I don't remember. So um, I'm assuming this is not also Lex Luthor's mother, and um, I'm not sure if. Um, I, if uh, we'll play a lot with the family dynamic 
um, uh, of all that. Like, already it's the super complex, convoluted Lex Luthor, Luther family tree. I kind of like that. You got to have that with the Luthers. Uh, but I, I wonder, I really hope we get Lex at some point, is, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Uh, and it makes me wonder if we'll do some stuff with those family dynamics. Um, that's, uh, I guess, about everything I have to say. Oh, I also want to mention uh, the action in this is really good. Um, Okay, I just thought of two more things I want to mention. First of all, uh, the stuff in the party uh, where... I guess everything else I want to mention is about that party. So, A, I... I Supergirl flying around the party using her heat vision looked fantastic, and I was smiling ear to ear. That was so much fun. Uh, this show has, as I've said before, not really lost any production value um, from where I'm sitting, and I'm really impressed with it. And you know, it feels like the same show on a different network. I keep lumping the CW superhero shows together the way I talk about quality and stuff, and that's not fair, because we're at least a rung or two above still uh, uh, quality-wise with the other shows. And even though Arrow has improved the season, and um, I'm liking things about Flash, it's back and forth, but I I, I still feel like the show is a couple of rung, is at least a rung or two um, in the storytelling quality from those shows, and it doesn't really, it doesn't fully feel like a CW superhero show yet. Uh, it's retained that 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 quality, which um, I'm impressed with, and even even the visual quality. Uh, the thing with the cop car uh, that she that she takes up into the sky looked pretty cool. Um, it would, it, this is a dense episode. We got a lot done, but it's also pretty thrilling, and uh, I appreciated that about it. I, I also hope somehow or rather we can put Lena and Wynn back together because they immediately had a really fun kind of nerdy, techie chemistry. I don't mean that I necessarily want to see them date or anything. I'm just saying that seeing them on screen together having to cooperate was really fun. Uh, he was lucky that he wound up under that table uh, to help her out with that um, with, with that uh, uh, force field thing. The, excuse me, the energy wave that goes out and takes out the 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 uh, the uh, uh, guns the the uh, ray guns but I also really like the way that that uh, scene ended uh, there's just our our uh, our, our good guy characters, our protagonists in this show, have so much of a, of a real sense of Superman optimism. I talk about that all the time, and I just really like the genuine way that we react to a situation like this, where uh, Wynn saves the day, and we're relieved, and Jimmy has his trademark smile on his face. Uh, we don't... We're not, like, overly dramatic all the time in this show, where everything is, um, is like is like super serious even when it doesn't make sense um I, I don't know if i'm making sense right now but i like like one of the things i always complained about with smallville was lack of downtime was uh characters not seeming to genuinely um like like uh especially in the later seasons like like they, they didn't the the way they uh, uh especially like friendly characters you know uh people who, who were supposed to like each other the way they interacted wasn't authentic uh we didn't have scenes where they just got together and sat down and had a hamburger or something. It was never, you never had even, and even just these kinds of genuine moments of levity or, um, or, or just relief like this. I always kind of appreciate that. Uh, this was a really good episode. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and it's certainly, uh, you know, a plot thickens kind of episode, so uh, we learned some things. Mostly, we're just moving some stuff along, but like I said, I thought, especially thematically, this was a real tight one. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. Sure appreciate it, and I'll see you again with some more Primetime Crisis coming in the next day or two.